Hello everyone, welcome to church today. It is so good to be with you. If you don't know me, my name is Josh Peterson. I'm the kids minister at St. Matt's. A particularly warm welcome to you if you are new. We are a church that loves having new people join us. Uh, if you are new, you can fill out the communication card, which is up the top right of your screen. Today, we are going to look at the Gospel of Luke. We're going to dig back into that in Luke chapter 7. Uh, and we're going to look at the question, what do you do about doubt? I'm sure many of you are doubting God's sovereignty and goodness in this difficult time. Uh, so Ross is going to bring that passage to us today. Uh, and we're going to hear from a dearly loved member of Samats as well about how he deals with doubt. Before we do that, though, we are going to sing together. Uh, so if you'd like to join us in singing Man of Sorrows.
We're going to go into a time of confession now. Uh, we've just heard it in that song about Jesus' sacrifice for us. Uh, and that sacrifice was as the result of our sin. 1 John 1 verse 8 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So let's join together in a confession now. It'll be up on the screen. Let's pray a confession. O oh Lord, our God, you know us better than we know ourselves. As we come before you now, believers and doubters alike, we all share a deep need, for we are all lost without your grace. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Test us and know our troubled thoughts. Give us true repentance. Forgive us all our wrongs. Transform us by your Spirit to live for you each day, to learn to serve each other, and through the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, to come at last to heaven. Amen. 1 John uh, 2, uh, verse 1 and 2 says this, But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He's the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the good news that when we confess our sins to God, uh, he forgives us of our sins and we have an advocate, um, Jesus Christ. Let's hear the Bible read now. Hi, I'm Ruby and I'm from the 6pm congregation. Um, our Bible reading for today comes from Luke chapter 7 verses 18 to 35. John's disciples told him about all of these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, illnesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger before you and who will prepare the way for you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John, yet the one who's least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. All the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the experts in the law rejected God's purpose for themselves because they had not been baptized by John. Jesus went on to say, to what then can I compare to this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to each other. We played the pipe for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not cry. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, he has a demon. 
The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by all her children. Hey everyone, it's so good to be with you uh, today. If we haven't met before, my name is Ross. I'm one of the pastors here at St. Matt's. It's such a joy uh, to be able to open up God's word with you. I feel, feel like I've really just missed those moments of, um, of speaking with people and, and sharing God's word. So I'm so excited to do that uh, today. And really we have just such a, a great passage. I love uh, Luke chapter seven, and I think it has such a powerful word to speak to us at this time in our lives. See, Luke 7, uh, verses 18 to 35, they're all about doubt and uncertainty. And I don't know about you, but those have been really words that have resonated with me at this point in my uh, life. I feel like with everything going on, we can be so uncertain and those doubts can start to rise. There's so much stuff on the internet at the moment, but one thing that I read last week was a paper from the McCrindle Research Group. And as they surveyed Sydney siders, the biggest thing, the biggest emotion that people were struggling with was uncertainty. It makes sense, doesn't it? We just don't know. We don't know if we're going to have a job over the next few weeks. We don't know if our wedding is going to go ahead. We don't know if or when we're going to see our grandparents again. And we don't even know silly things like, is there going to be any Cadbury chocolate in aisle three? We just don't know. And that uncertainty can be really hard. And what uncertainty does is, over time, it starts to bleed its way out into other parts of our life. We might be uncertain about something like work, but slowly but surely, that can start to make us uncertain about other things including our faith. As we suffer, as we struggle, as we question, we can start to question the bigger things. We can start to question whether Jesus is the real deal. Is Jesus the one who can help us? Is Jesus doing anything at all? These are big questions, big doubts, big uncertainties. And these are actually the exact questions that are raised in our passage today. As we look at Luke chapter 7, we're looking and hearing from John the Baptist. And in our passage, he's asking some really big questions. And so if you've got your Bibles there, uh, open them up. We're going to have a look at Luke chapter 7. And I want to just draw your attention at the start here to the question that's on Jesus's, uh, John's lips, I should say, as he talks to Jesus. Have a look at verse 19 with me. This is what it says. John sends them to the Lord to ask, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? That's a big question, isn't it? Should we expect someone else? That's John asking whether we should be looking for a different saviour. And it's John the Baptist asking the question, which is huge, isn't it? Like as you think about who John is, that's like Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, you know? He's his right-hand man. He's his, he's his dude. It's the Chewy to his Han Solo. It's the Peter Costello to his John Howard. This is the guy who is meant to be his number one supporter starting to wonder, are you the real deal? And so what's, what's going on with that? But I tell you what's even stranger The thing that has made John question, so have a look uh, at verse 18. John's disciples told him about all these things. What are the these things? Well, it's all the miracles that Jesus has been doing. So Jesus has been doing all this good stuff, and then John has started to therefore doubt Jesus. It's like, sorry, what? Why? Why? It's not, it's not as if there was some moral scandal. There was no electoral fraud. There's no imposter syndrome. It's good things that have made John doubt Jesus. What on earth is going on here? And really the answer we find in the context. You see, we don't see it directly in this passage, but 
did you notice that John doesn't go himself to ask Jesus? He sends others to do it for him. Why? Because he can't. You see, John is in prison. And all of a sudden, we start to get a bit of a clearer idea. John can't question Jesus because he's stuck in a dirty old prison cell. But even more than that, do you remember the things that John taught about Jesus? He said that when Jesus came, he would get rid of the corruption. He said when Jesus came, it will be a time of judgment. He said when Jesus came, it will be a time of justice and peace. And now here's John, sitting in a cell, watching the corrupt, hearing about the, the unjust, doing their thing. The question kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? Jesus has not lived up to John's expectations at all. Jesus really doesn't look like the kind of hero John was expecting. And that can happen to us as well, can't it? Maybe we're stuck in quarantine, or maybe we're stuck in some difficult situation. And all of a sudden it's like, wait, this isn't how it should go. This isn't what I thought a life with Jesus would look like. This isn't what I expected. And doubt rises and rises. And so what does Jesus say to John? And what does Jesus say to us? Well, let's have a look at his response. And I love his response. It's quirky, if we're honest. And at first, it takes a little bit of understanding. But in verses 21 and 22, uh, Jesus answers John. And he answers him in such a soft and gentle way that it's really powerful. And what he does is he goes back and kind of mentions all the good stuff he's been doing again, which is kind of weird at first, right? Because that's the stuff that's confused John in the first place. But what Jesus is actually doing is he's going back to the book of Isaiah and he's doing like a fancy mashup. He's grabbing all sorts of little promises, prophecies about what the Messiah would look like and he's jamming them all together. And why is he doing that? Well, for two reasons. Firstly, he's trying to remind John all of the good stuff, the healing of the sick, the healing of the blind, the driving out the demons. That is his mission. That is what he's on about. And all of that points to who he is. He is still the hope of the world. Even if he's not filling one expectation you had, he's still doing all of the other things that he was meant to do. So that's the first thing. It points to the fact that he is the hope of the world. But what's super interesting is, John uh, has been struggling with all the justice stuff. And Jesus, when he quotes from Isaiah, he takes out all of the justice passages. It's weird. He mashes them all together, deliberately removing the justice passages. And the reason for that is, he's trying to teach John something. He's trying to teach him that justice is part of his mission objective. But the time for justice is not yet. This is the time for salvation. And so what we learn here as we look at John and we look at Jesus is that John's expectations haven't been met. It feels like he's been let down by Jesus. And we can feel that too, can't we? We can feel let down by Jesus or like our expectations haven't been met. Maybe you're still uh, struggling in some situation that isn't good. Maybe Jesus hasn't yet uh, healed some sickness that you wanted him to heal. Maybe Jesus hasn't helped someone that you love and care about yet. And you're feeling a little bit let down. Well, there's a powerful, powerful message for us here. You see, as followers of Jesus, Jesus will not always live up to our expectations. And that causes us to doubt. But there's also a great, great reminder. Jesus is the hope of our world. He really is. And he will do what he says that he will do. And in the midst of our doubts, what we need to remember is, Jesus won't always do what we expect, but he will always, always do what is good. See, sometimes when we have doubts, we feel like, we shouldn't have doubts. We should feel like that is wrong. But it's okay to have doubts. See, doubt is not 
the absence of faith. See, faith is, is the ability to have our doubts and to keep on trusting Jesus in the midst of all of our doubts, to keep on going on, to know that one day Jesus will bring in a new world. He will bring and he will change and he will do what he says he will do. And we just need to keep on keeping on in the midst of that. There will be a time when all things will be made new. And that is such a good and powerful moment for us all. So what does Jesus have to say to John? He says, I understand and I know what you're going through. I know that it doesn't look like I'm here, but I am. And I'm doing what is good. And I'm doing what is right. I am the hope of the world. And really that's the first half of our passage. Jesus has comforted John. He's helped him understand what's going on. And in the second half, Jesus turns his attention to two different groups of people who were in the crowd. On the first uh, group of people are the doubters, and he has a word of comfort for them. The second group of people are the disbelievers, and he has a word of challenge for them. And so if we have a look at the doubters first, you'll notice them come up, uh, and they're represented by John, and he speaks to them in verses 24 to 28. And really, these verses are a defence of John. And it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? On one hand, you can imagine the people around thinking, wait a second, John's a doubter. He can't be the real deal. Like, why did we listen to him in the first place? But what Jesus is doing here is he's reminding them, he's reminding uh, the crowds that just because John had doubts doesn't mean he's not the real deal. See, we all will have doubts at some point in our faith. We all will have moments of question, moments of query, moments of wondering what on earth is going on. And often those moments come in the midst of suffering. And that is okay. It's okay to have doubts. In fact, uh, Jesus uh, says that John is one of the greatest people, in fact, the greatest person ever born of a woman. Jesus knows that John is still great despite our doubts. That's a powerful word to us. You can have doubts and that can sit okay in the midst of your faith. Doubt is not the same as disbelief. And that's the point that Jesus is really driving out here. And that's what he goes with the next part of our passage and this final part. He speaks now not to the people who are doubting, but those who are disbelieving. And they're represented by the Pharisees in our passage today. And we really get this at the end in verses 29 all the way through to 35. And Jesus uh, compares the disbelievers with children who can't be pleased. That's the difference between doubt and disbelief. Doubters are looking for an answer, hoping to have their mind changed. The disbeliever doesn't want their mind changed. They're like kids who can't be pleased. It's like when you go to a cafe uh, and you're sitting there with a, with a kid and you say to them, do you want the chicken nuggets? Nah, I don't want the chicken nuggets. Okay, no worries. Um, do you want the mac and cheese? No, I don't want the mac and cheese. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, salad, there's a great little quinoa salad here. No, nah, I don't want the quinoa salad, Dad. I don't even know what quinoa is. And, and you just can't, you can't poison them. You suggest every single thing on the menu and you just... They don't want anything. That's how kids go sometimes, isn't it? But we can be like that with Jesus, can't we? We can be never pleased by Jesus. Jesus is too loving. Jesus is too just. Jesus is too... We can always have a question. And although we present them like we want answers, we know deep down in our heart, nothing is ever going to satisfy us. If that is you, can I please encourage you to not do that? There are so many people who love you. There are so many people who want you to know Jesus and who are doing everything they can in life to do that. Please give Jesus a real red hot chance. Don't be like a kid who doesn't want to eat anything on the menu. Be someone who's willing to try the quinoa salad. Give Jesus a legitimate chance. He maybe just will change your mind. And so that's what we've seen in our passage, haven't we? We've seen uh, that Jesus sometimes doesn't live up to our expectations, but he is the hope of the world. 
and he's doing good things for us, even when it doesn't look like it. So in the meantime, what do we do with our doubt? Well, my encouragement is to do what John does with his doubt. Notice John doesn't bury his doubt deep down inside. That can be the temptation, can't it? When you've got a question, it's like, oh, I shouldn't have that thought. I shouldn't wonder that. I'm just going to push it down, 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 down. But John actually raises his doubt and he confronts it. And so my encouragement is for you to do the same thing too. Raise your doubts, explore them, and try to get some answers. And a way of doing that is with five little steps. And in the chat on the side, there's going to be a document which will help you run through what it looks like to try to explore your doubt. But, but here are the five steps in the quickest way I can. What do you do with doubt? Firstly, state it as clearly as you can. Write out your doubt. Know what it is. Secondly, explore it. Try to figure out where it's come from. Is there some past experience? Is there some present suffering? Or is there something currently missing? that's leading you to doubt. State it, explore it, speak it. There's something really powerful about saying your doubts out loud to someone else. Let someone else in. Fourthly, Bible it. This is really powerful. Look in God's word to see what promises speak into your doubts. What has God promised to do for you that will change how you feel? And secondly, what in God's word do we learn about who God is, his character, which challenges how we feel? That's Bible. Fifthly, pray it. Take some chances to pray and pray deep, big prayers. Look for God to change how you feel. And then at the end of all of that, repeat. Sometimes our doubts, they don't go away in a week, two weeks, a month. We just keep working through them. It's okay to have doubts but we want to keep exploring and trying to challenge our doubts. And so as we come to the end of our time today, we're all going to have doubts in this life, but the message of the gospel radically changes them. See, the gospel says that Jesus died and rose again, and that changes everything. That means that Jesus is our friend and not our foe. It means that he loves us and he wants good for us, not evil. It means that God is our Father. And that means that we can trust him, even when we have absolutely no idea what he is doing. And i tell you what, large parts of our lives sometimes feel like that. We may not always know what God is doing. Jesus may not always do what we expect. But brothers and sisters, he will always do what is good. Amen.
Well, we have a very special treat for you today. We've got Rob Stewart with us, and it's so nice to see you. Uh, if you're new to St. Matt's or part of All Saints, uh, you won't have met Rob uh, before, but Rob has been a long-term member of the staff team at St. Matt's, absolute legend. Uh, so many people love him and he loves so many people and it's great to have you with us. Rob, you've been, uh, well, technically on the staff team, uh, but you've been on sick leave for, for a while with yep. uh, quite chronic pain as well as Parkinson's. Yeah. So tell us how you're going. Uh, many of us haven't caught up, so how are things? Uh, th 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 thank you, Baz. It's uh, lovely to c c come in and it's lovely to share from uh, at the distance. I, I'm doing okay, thank you. It's, it's a, um, as Baz said, the, 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 the two things are n -n 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 nerve pain and Parkinson's. And I'm on a, a few medication for, for them b -b -b both. And uh, things are pretty stable. Uh, the, 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 the thing is, I would love when people um, ask, I'd love to say I'm doing better, but, 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 but and it's, a, it's a slowly going down a gear. So, so, so that uh, it makes me sad for the reason actually that Baz said, um, I love the p people of St. Matt's and it's exciting how many have come along since I've gone on leave, but I miss everyone terribly, but just w w wish I had capacity to be involved, but that's something that's still g g gone. Well, it's great that we can do through this COVID time a, a shorter interview with you and for you to uh, minister to us this way. Um, you've been suffering for a number of years now. Um, it must be a real test on your faith. Sermon has just been on doubt. Yeah. Do you doubt what God's doing for you? How's your faith going in all of this? Like, it must be a, a spiritual workout as well as the physical workout. Yeah. It it's really interesting when Baz contacted me. I thought back, this all started on a mission at Lightning Ridge in 2011 when I couldn't resist the bouncy castle. <laughs> and um, it started a, a tear in my ACL. Long story short, the, 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 there was a complication with two nerves in my groin. And so I was thinking, although when I hit the wall at the end of 2017, there was a, almost a long goodbye as I couldn't be involved at six and it took time. And it's one of those things where I'm in my 50s, so do many of you, I'm old, but I still look and say the boy has potential. <laughs> and I never thought that I'd be unable mm -hmm. um, at this age time. I suppose one of the things I haven't said is why, Lord, in the sense of why is this happening to me? I, because I say, well, why not? There's so much happens and so much harder stuff happens to so many in our church family and, and our community on world. But you do doubt at times. You doubt, you think, Lord, have I done something really disobedient? And your head says, no, but your heart goes, I'm so far from perfect, Lord. Is this a, a punishment? And like Job's friends, some people have a gift at helping those thoughts fester. <laughs> um, and not, not a gift 
that I didn't encourage. Um, and, and you sometimes think, Lord, what about the future? What does it look like? And, and it's been a time of, of bringing back to saying, Lord, I can, I can do, do, do today, I think, but there have been lots of times just after midnight where I go, all right, Lord, you did give me the grace for the day. Mm. It didn't feel like it at the time, but you did. So let's, let's start again the, the, this, this day. And just realising that that doubt doesn't mean you're not trusting. There's so many more doubts I've had. I'm not feeling I can do anything to contribute to God's kingdom. I'm not doing. And that is such a hardwired part of us. So the feeling of letting people down, feeling cut off, feeling forgotten, feeling there's a, a cost because of no capacity. There's so many things and doubts that run, but those doubts don't take us away from God. Mm. Those doubts I can bring to him. And it's not like clicking your fingers and they're all resolved. They come back and they, they go and they, they play on your mind. And you know, you, 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 things happen, you miss people dreadfully. But, 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 but doubt, like Thomas, I love Thomas. Thomas, we call doubting, but he, he was the only disciple who didn't get to see the risen Jesus. And if I was him, I'd feel a bit left out and would have been stronger in saying, well, I won't believe unless I see. And when Jesus did appear to him, Thomas said, oh, it's all right, Lord, I believe. And Jesus said, here I am, look, to touch Thomas. And Thomas's doubts didn't mean he wasn't in a relationship with Jesus. It just meant he felt hurt or confused or struggling to think, is, is this something, why am I left out? But, but, but of course, none of that. It was so Jesus could reveal something greater. And this time it was so that he could say, those who believe and don't see me, um, how, how blessed are they? they, 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 they. Mm. Oh, it's a big ramble, sorry, Baz. That's yeah, beautiful, Rob. You said at one point, uh, doubting is not the same thing as unbelief. Yeah. And uh, I think there's something really good in that. Uh, yeah. And you've ministered so beautifully in your own struggles uh, to us today, so thank you. You should know that many people are praying for you and for Liz and uh, all the time, uh, for many years it's been sustained uh, yes. it's because you love so many and we love you too. So Thank you, Baz. Thanks, thanks for your ministry today. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Fran and I'm going to pray for you now. So please join me as we pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we acknowledge our own frailty and limitations in dealing with the current crisis. We acknowledge our sinfulness and desire to run our lives away from you. We are sorry that even when we desire good things, sin is right there beside us, and that is the path we so often take. Please forgive us. We thank you for the hope of the resurrection, for we know that because Christ was raised from the dead, we also have hope that we too will be raised with him. Please remind us daily of this sure and precious hope, a hope that can never perish, spoil or fade, good news for all, and especially at a times of immense suffering. 
We pray for our leaders in Australia and across the world as they grapple with the devastation that is being wreaked upon local, national and international communities. We ask for unity in their decision making, that they may make decisions for the good of all and wisdom that they might fear the God of the universe. Please put in their paths truthful and wise men and women who may guide our leaders in their decision making. We pray for our health workers. Thank you, Lord, for these selfless people who continue to astound us with their care for those who are unwell. Please protect them from getting sick and restore those who have contracted the virus to full health. We pray for the most vulnerable in our communities. We think especially of the elderly and those in care homes, children and young people and women who may be being exposed to difficult family environments, the unemployed and the poor. We know you are a God of justice who loves mercy and so we ask for your mercy on these people. We are mindful, Lord, that there are many across our world who live in extreme poverty and for whom this virus will have potentially devastating consequences. We think of the work of the Freedom Project and Sunshine Cambodia who work in slum communities. We thank you for the way their good work over many years has enabled them to build favour in their broader communities. We pray for their physical protection and for the morale of the teams as they navigate communication through technology. And again, we pray for your mercy. We ask for ourselves that whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, we will seek to do good, even when it is personally costly. Please open our eyes so that we may see clearly where good needs to happen and give us the strength to do it. We pray these things in the name of our precious Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for his glory. Amen. We're going to continue praying uh, by praying the Lord's Prayer together. So join with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please join with us in singing now. I will see the world to come suffered in my place that there is grace awaiting me awaiting me judgments done atonements made the ransoms paid no guilt remains that there is grace awaiting me awaiting me from the Father, grace, forgiveness, full and free, grace that's greater than our failings, oh there is grace awaiting me. Comfort in the hope of the thief upon the cross. For I am worthy of as little love as he. Like this man, I won't despair. The life's ahead, what joy will share. Now there is grace awaiting me, awaiting me. Jesus, 
have done For there is grace awaiting me Awaiting me Pose the question at the beginning of our service, what do we do about doubt? Uh, and we've seen today that Jesus doesn't always do what we expect, but he does what is good. So let's remember that as we go into our weeks this week. Thank you for joining us uh, and please stick around for a cuppa and, and Q&A after the service. See you later. <laughs>